Now you don't have to be scared, even if he finds you. John Whitman being an adult now comes across VHS copies in a video store that he used to watch as a kid which instantly gives him a deep comforting nostalgic feeling deciding to purchase them and rewatch them. But after rewatching the first episode of The Six he comes to an eerie discovery that the show he used to watch being broadcasted on TV were very different to what he watches on the VHS copies which makes him question his memories watching the tapes thinking if he remembered that this differently as children typically have greater imagination. Thankfully, he finds the recordings that he made while watching the TV broadcasts, playing them back to back for comparison, which confirms what he watched on TV was indeed very different to what the episodes really showed. The VHS copies seem to be intended for children, being very generic and teaching them of normal tasks and social aspects such as being more confident and how to introduce oneself. However, the TV recording shows a more uncanny version of the show with the main character, Angel Gabby, introducing herself as Angel Gabriel and looking deeply into the screen asking for the viewer's name, which she continues after a second or two confirming as if she heard the name repeat it, saying Jonah is a nice name and how she really hopes to be good friends with the viewer. Hello there. My name is Angel Gabby. What's yours? That's a beautiful name. It's wonderful to meet you and I hope we can be friends. Hello there. My name is Angel Gabriel. What's yours? It's wonderful to meet you, Jonah. I hope I can be a good friend to you. Despite feeling as if Angel Gabby is specifically talking to him, Jonah believes that there must have been a main unseen character called Jonah whom Angel Gabby constantly referred to, whom she encouraged and helped throughout life on how to conquer his fears and to be more confident in doing things that she labels as stepping stones for becoming a better person, which slowly become more and more questionable. Jonah rewatching the recordings and comparing them to the VHS copy and suddenly gets goosebumps and finds it difficult to breathe, feeling as if Angel Gabby directly spoke to him and that there was some sort of supernatural involved in this show or at least the version that he was watching on TV. If not for the recordings, Jonah would think that he's going crazy, but luckily he has proof that something uncanny was going on with the version of the show that he was watching, wondering how Gabby could know about specific things about Jonah, such as his favorite book and his name. The idea behind Gabby is that she is a guardian angel, watching over the viewers, giving them guidance and correct social etiquette, watching over them. So it would make sense why this version of Gabby would very specifically watch over Jonah, protecting him and communicating with him. With this new strange discovery, Jonah decides to find out as much as he can about the show and the publishing company, learning that it was distributed by a company called KP Publishing which went bankrupt in late 90s. What the publishing company mentioned on the recordings is called Wreath of Life, a name which doesn't show up anywhere, neither online or in any business records. Playing the second tape, episode number two, the actual VHS copy is about faith and hope and how to be resilient and strong during tough times. But the recording takes a darker turn, glitching and shifting, introducing a new scenario specifically tailored for Jonah, with Jonah even questioning how Gabby knew about his life circumstances and how she knew what he exactly needed in different times. Gabby while addressing Jonah goes on giving him exact instructions of how to protect himself when a specific he tried to enter his room and harm him, putting the chair against the doorknob and hiding in closet, with Jonah even noting how he and his mother were not always alone, with a specific he being in their life before. Like David's little pebble against Goliath, this little chair is going to be stronger than anyone who comes to your door. Look at that! It's so strong! Now let's get in the closet. The dark can be scary, but it can also be peaceful. Instead of letting the sounds and darkness make you fearful, look at God's blessings and concentrate hard on something you're thankful for. Very good, Jonah. Now you don't have to be scared, even if he finds you. <laughs>
Meanwhile, a bonus tape overtaken by Gabby's friend Frances reveals that there are more angel hairs out there, with each having their own responsibilities while there are demon hairs as well as their counterparts, which as Frances explains are not plainly shown as demons, but many times they are seen as opportunity and temptation. Therefore, this in a way reveals that many angel hairs existed who might have tried to help each kid around the world with the difficult circumstances that they are facing. So it is a possibility angel Gabriel in fact was a guardian angel to Jonah, showing him ways of protecting himself. Watching the third episode, Jonah expands on his childhood that his mother would always tell him everyone has scars, saying Jonah got his scars from horseplay, something Jonah is questioning now, if they really were from horseplay or something more sinister. Of course, these scars were probably from the specific he whom we don't know much of, someone that Gabby tried to protect Jonah from. The tape reveals that Gabby was completely dismissing Frances, her cartoon friend, and instead directly spoke to Jonah, listening to him carefully and actively interacting with him in detail about hiding a weapon and instructing him how to use it when he is afraid of him or when situations become severe. Gabby even instructs Jonah to hide the weapon so it wouldn't be incriminating, labeling herself as Jonah's guardian angel, always watching him and being there for him. Jonah, having blurry memories, questions how he was alone for such long time at such a young age, seeing that these conversations went on for hours with Gabby being more of a parent figure for him than his own family. This slowly starts forming a good image on how Jonah was seemingly abused and neglected at home, with possibly a violent father which his cartoon character was embodied as such to protect Jonah. It's no surprise Jonah barely remembers any of it as the mind has a tendency of blurring the painful memories to protect someone, wiping them clean. Subsequently, watching the fourth tape, it seems as if Gabby is creating an alibi for something she's encouraging Jonah to do, preparing him to use a weapon, hide it, lie about something, and then tell the truth when the time is right. If you know you're going to be in trouble, you should create a truth for later. Will you ever forgive me? Go to a friend's house when something bad happens, and you won't have to lie about it when they ask you later. They are going to ask you what happened, Jonah, so you have to make sure you're gone when the time comes. We have to make sure you only have truth to tell. Jonah, trying to find incident reports in his hometown, finds out a flood destroyed all the reports in his municipality, giving him no leads. Being desperate to find out who this cartoon character introducing herself as Angel Gabriel was, Jonah drives unannounced to his mother's house, not telling her the truth of why he's there. That's when he goes to the attic, going over all his belongings as a child, finding so much about his past and Angel Gabby. It turns out the mother tried contacting the publishing company on so many occasions that they threatened her with legal actions to stop, with the mother seemingly knowing about the strange nature of this cartoon series. Thinking the only way to communicate with Gabby is through live broadcasts, Jonah decides to live stream one of the episodes and tries his best to interact with her in a shaky voice calling to Gabby, which, to his shock, she responds back, saying how glad she is to see how well Jonah has grown and who he has become, which makes Jonah tremble in fear and happiness, not knowing what to say or do, with this confirming his theories that Angel Gabby is a living being. Oh my god, what? Um, it's, it's me, Jonah, I'm here. Do you remember me? I'm... So happy to see you, Jonah. <laughs> Just look how well you've grown. Remembering older tapes, Jonah notices how she was patient with him during decorating eggs for Easter, being more of a parent figure, being a company for him at any given time. Managing to speak to Angel Gabby for the entire night and catching up while live streaming on a loop, all of a sudden she disappears with no trace after Easter, with Jonah never ending the live stream 
hoping that she would reappear. Waiting and waiting with Francis the Badger calling to her all the time as well. Time passes on with Jonah slowly giving up hope when all of a sudden a counterpart to Gabby appears. A black rabbit who has an upside down smile, being the opposite to Gabby, seemingly being a demon. This rabbit called Zaggy has a deadpan attitude and decides to ignore Jonah throughout the episodes even though Jonah tries to confront him and interact with him. That's when he starts thinking he must have done something to Gabby and the only way he can stop him is through ending the live stream. Just when he's about to do it, Zaggy breaks character, surprised that Jonah, a simple individual, can broadcast the show, not knowing about internet, making everything come to life, revealing that he's here to look for Gabby as well, not being the one who made her disappear. Zaggy is very serious and takes his role even more seriously, being more of a pragmatic character, always being efficient and logical rather than kind and sympathetic. He gives Jonah a task to do in order to help with his investigation finding Gabby. Are you able to record? Why did you put the show back on? Are you with Wreath? I came to find her, genius. What are you doing? Hey, Pally, I can only get so much done with eight fingers and a tail. This will be a lot easier in a setting with more depth. That's when Jonah goes to a store and finds an old film called Wild Hair, which is about a classic duo in a detective style cartoon show, with Zack being a detective and Francis being his sidekick, being humans now. Further in their investigation, Jonah becomes curious and asks so many questions to who Zack truly is and who is Gabby, when he simply answers that they are associates and that he doesn't have the same approach as her, holding hands and glamorizing his approach. Instead, he is thorough and straight to the point, showing the way and instructions, believing the subjects should do the rest, saying kids are smart enough and that they will figure out the way. That's classified, pal. Don't worry about it. Oh, there. We're associates. I'm not her dad, pal. I don't care for her hand-holding approach, but her work's none of my business. You ask me? Kids are smart. Show them what to do, they'll figure it out without the song and dance. Look, buddy, I need you to slow down and ask yourself an important question right now. Think about your little rabbit friend and really ask, do you want to know or do you want her back? Huh? Despite their different approaches, both Gabby and Zack seem to have the same duties, to help and assist kids with their trouble and challenges. They seem to embody different cartoon characters when broadcasted live, being able to directly communicate with the ones who need their help the most. So it seems they might be guardian angels watching over kids, especially as they appear in cartoons which are intended for kids. Zack and Francis manage to broadcast many screens themselves in the wild hair world with Jonah also doing so when they manage finding Gabby being trapped in so many different streams due to Jonah exposing her with many people at the same time calling to her. It turns out Zag is Zag Zagol, the angel of righteousness being a more pragmatic angel. It turns out she tried to help many troubled kids all at once getting herself trapped, displaying her kind and nurturing nature. Zack and Gabby, including Francis, all were guardians helping children, but since the inception of internet, many children didn't have time schedules for watching cartoons anymore and could access them at any given time, which for the angels means more work and worse working hours. But despite that, Gabby mentions that they adapted before and well now as well, asking Jonah to help them. So you might ask, what was it that Gabby helped Jonah with and his child to it, which he also wiped his memories of to be safe and protected. Well, it seems as if he killed his own father in order to protect himself and his mother from constant abuse and trauma. The father seems to have been violent and at certain point it becomes too severe that Jonah with the instructions of Gabby is left with no other choice but to kill him. Using some sort of a weapon, maybe a knife, something a young Jonah couldn't handle without using both hands. This leads to both Jonah and the mother being freed from all the trauma and eventually Gabby 
moving gun to help other children in need. Zack, despite his serious demeanor and at first unapproachable technique, is actually a righteous guardian angel too, having a more serious and practical approach being suited for different type of kids. Either way, they seem to have worked together to help children around the world and now they will keep on doing that despite the high demand with the help of Jonah. And that brings us to the end of the video folks. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and to definitely check out the creator's channel. As always, it's been your host R. Until the next one, have a fantastic day.